Hey, welcome to a more sweet video than usual, where today I'm painting with the drink most people need to wake up to in the morning. Coffee! I'm more of a matcha tea or boba person, but I got recommended by a friend to try using blobby shapes to draw. So I took the challenge and used specifically French vanilla to help me test my imagination and skill on blob art. Slightly reminded me of the weird Rorschach test, a very appetizing one. Although I'm using K-cup pods, I thought that it'd be more fun to brew it in an actual coffee maker. Scooping it out lazily, I plopped it in the coffee machine and turned it on. So instead of waiting less than a minute for instant coffee by a machine that these things were made for, <laughs> just, just for the satisfying feel that barely makes a difference, I waited and walked around bored for 5 minutes and 22 seconds for the coffee to barely make it to 4 cups. Pouring a little for me, I'm not th that into caffeine personally, as I'm like drinking a fucking, I'm drinking like a freaking Starbucks fr uh, vanilla bean frap right now. I'm such a fucking hypocrite. <laughs> Pouring a little for me, I'm not that into caffeine personally, and the rest is for the painting process. I was not ready to start on this mess, and if you're curious why my coffee was white, I added, I added a lot of milk, sugar, and some cookie cream ice cream. It, it tasted really good, I'm, I'm such a sweet tooth. I waited for the coffee to cool down slightly before using a plastic spoon to help me pour and splatter some of it on my book. And there I realized all of these were going to pour to the bottom causing a mess on my table. <laughs> and also leave a puddle when I'm done. This will rip me I guess, but oh well. As I continued pouring and looking at the splotches, I realized, man, waiting for this is going to take forever. So I used tissues without trying to mess it up. I think I did a decent job here and stared at the coffee stains trying to figure out what I wanted to make. It was really difficult to unsee a man just leaping into the air like a hiya pose. Very ridiculously. <laughs> eventually I tried to see the upper blobs as hair or a cape. And eventually got a vague idea of two people. <laughs> two, two silhouettes, two figures. I tried using a pencil to help me sketch this idea, although it's very faint and I wasn't even sure if it'll ruin the paper or coffee. Luckily it didn't, and so I sketched out two people, maybe lovers, facing each other poetically. I could see the splatters as little flower petals to make it all romantic and scenic, except that one odd shaped one. For some reason, I kept seeing a human heart. Which isn't the prettiest to look up for for a reference <laughs> with all the veins and all that. But I did it and maybe it means something in this. I don't know, but I like it there. I start with the man who looks like an odd gray movie detective or agent. One of the ones that like smoke a cigar and have a depressive tough guy aura ready to kick ass while crying about his dead wife. So I can make the other person maybe like a lovely royal like woman that have like ghostly hair floating within the air. They could be close to embrace but how I drew the guy's arm in the air makes it like a very awkward poetic dance. <laughs> Which kind of made me laugh a bit but I like it either way. <laughs> Maybe it's two lovers who lost each other from a battle of life and death in an investigation or appeasing a spirit. Maybe it's a poltergeist. Maybe she stole someone's heart literally while haunting that person. This, the drawing does feel more somber here though. It was a nice starter piece and I felt comfortable with the coffee painting idea after this. I started realizing the paper was starting to warp, which is a problem. There is often an issue with things like watercolor, aka my favorite painting medium, but I didn't have enough paper to skip like over the pages or anything, and I didn't have painter's tape to tape down to the table and not rip the paper, so I had to keep it within the book, which... S Thanks, Uber Eats. I didn't have painter's tape to tape it down to the table, 
and not rip the paper so I had to keep it within the book with something platformed on the bottom so that's nice. I used large spoonfuls to plop but I wanted to see what would happen if I tried to control the swirls. It didn't work. I, I got a few swirls I liked but with how the coffee could take you to puddle from the paper and then drift, it's better to just let it be. However, I was stubborn and as well as impatient. Seeing the shape, I was really into the idea I had in mind involving wings, since I got reminded of the wings from Lapis Lazuli from Stevie Universe. I rushed the drawing process, resulting in coffee smudging the white parts, which upset me since I love the negative and positive space balance. This is just to teach me to wait a bit longer with these things. I thought what I thought was dry enough, I tried to do a vague sketch of this angelic child in the center with the wings that are like flowing like a circle, three times the size of the child. I really liked where this was going, and once starting on the face and hair, I realized it wasn't dry yet. <laughs> it was a small merge and I didn't want to keep waiting so I pushed through. The result isn't as bad but if you ever plan on doing this, please wait. <laughs> Otherwise it, will, it could have worse results than what I've received. I just wanted to mess with the shape of the feathers and wings subconsciously making the body and wings a heart shaped uh, and the crescent halo within the background. I also wanted to add a watery feel to, to hint the, at the inspiration of Lapis, so I made the crescent halo melt, which looks more like a melting sideways moon now. So, <laughs> so I added more around the wings and added a small halo on top of the child to make them angelic as well. I will say, I did add too much for this, but I really liked it personally. The power the child must have here. So fucking cool. I like that. <laughs> This one was gonna be a doozy because I decided, hey, know what would be fun? Pour the cup! And so I regretted the mess leaking down to the bottom constantly and to see if there was just a fat blob on the paper. I stared at this wart mess trying to balance the coffee using a plastic spoon to dry evenly which wasn't working, and drawing with the spoon to add more interesting shapes did not help either. If any of these were a test, it would be this one for sure. I had to stare for a good while, which I had the time to do because the coffee took forever to dry since I practically dumped it. I, I just whirled in my chair, chatted on the call, waited while staring at the mess, trying to figure out what the hell this was going to be. I like the back and splatters sticking out with a few spots, but the mass of coffee stain and the seeing the bumps above gave me an idea. A frog. <laughs> so I tried drawing it carefully compared to the last drawing, and although I'm confident I messed up a few spots, I got to keep the main factors of the shapes I really liked and also realized how many tissues I use for this project in general, especially this one. At least the room smelled good. Sketching was giving me trouble too since I wasn't sure how I wanted to draw the frog. I wanted to give it a chanting feel, so maybe a combo, cow strawberry frog, bull frog, but quite literally. What about a water frog? Flower frog? No, flowers are too basic of a thing I do. It was so hard to figure out how to make this frog make sense. I just knew I wanted a frog on a tree branch. And then I thought of tree frog. Who could have guessed that? Which is already a thing in real life, but what about a literal one? So I made the frog have a mossy tummy and wooden spirals with harsh bark arms that would fade to mossy fingers to clutch onto the branch. My favorite part to draw was the big bulging eye staring blankie. It's so adorable and goofy. 
The one coffee stain on the left that was shaped like a branch made me wonder what if this one had branches or thorns poking out, like self-defense. Like, yeah. So I had prickly leaves and branches out the back on one of the sides that flow well with the coffee stains. And I really enjoyed the small details I made. I want to add more to the surrounding though. Then I noticed this dark stain on the top of the page and thought, hey, frogs like flies, right? So I drew flies on top of the paint splatters around the frog, which helped bring life to the drawing. And one inside the mouth slightly poking out for a help me, help me, help me, <laughs> for a help me joke. I would never have thought of drawing a frog like this, but doing this challenge helped me imagine ideas I wouldn't have thought otherwise, and this frog somewhat proves that. So that's the three coffee stain drawings I did, and I feel as though the more I went on, the more confident I've gotten with details and what I saw personally. I would recommend this for anyone to try. It doesn't have to be coffee, maybe a matcha latte from Dunkin' Donuts or just strawberry milkshakes. Although that wouldn't be nicely scented after a while. Whatever works for you, I know I had a lot of fun, the frog being my favorite of the trio. Thank you to Ramster for the idea of editing the video, credit where it's due. Ramster's Twitter, Ramster's YouTube channel will be in the bottom link down. And if you want to help support me, I do commissions on Twitter and Tumblr with the details listed on my cards. Or if you want, since this is a coffee theme, you could donate a tip on my Ko-Fi to help this fellow artist keep drawing. Thank you, and as always, stay safe and have a great day.